I'm Rachel Oliver, and this is VCU Insight. Thousands of runners are expected to be participating in the Monument Avenue 10K this weekend. The 6.2-mile course starts on Broad Street by the Siegel Center and then stretches for three miles both ways on Monument Avenue. The course will be lined with more than 30 live bands and DJs designed to keep the runners moving. You can expect a number of street closures across Richmond, including closures on Broad Street, Schaefer Street, Gray Street, Monument Avenue, and Franklin Street. So if you're looking to go somewhere this weekend, you might want to walk there. The flying squirrels are threatening to leave Richmond. Mark Gadd is at the Diamond to explain the situation and what the team's president has to say. Mark? Yeah, Rachel, it might be a swing and a miss on the Richmond Kickers' new ballpark after President Lou DiBella says there has been no progress over a new stadium. Seven months ago, Richmond City Council members approved the construction of a new minor league stadium for the squirrels. But the development progress has been frustrating so far, with the Squirrels management saying that no ballpark design or construction timetable has been made available. Meanwhile, a city spokesperson did not address the pace of the work, but said in a statement that the city has been working tirelessly and is committed to completing this important, intentional project. Dibble insists that new MLB guidelines will leave the Squirrels with no other option than to leave Richmond. Reporting from the Diamond, I'm Mark Gadd, VCU Insight. With VCU head coach Mike Rhodes departing for Penn State, the Rams welcome in newly appointed head coach Ryan Odom. Sam Wolf tells us more about the coaching change. Yeah, I'm here at the Siegel Center where VCU wrapped up another fantastic season, winning the A-10 regular season title and the A-10 postseason title. However, in that body of work, VCU head coach Mike Rhodes had done enough to impress the athletic department at Penn State to fill their vacant head coaching position. With the open position, VCU's athletic department turned a quick search and were impressed by Utah State head coach Ryan Odom enough to give him the job. One of the reasons why I'm standing right here before you right now, what coach wouldn't want to coach you? With the coaching change comes player turnover. After the announcement of Coach Rhodes' departure, key players such as Jalen Deloach, Jameer Watkins, Atlantic 10 Player of the Year Ace Baldwin have entered their name into the transfer portal. With all the uncertainty surrounding the roster, Coach Odom has a plan to convince some of last season's squad to return. I think the, the biggest thing right away is, is, you know, reminding them why they chose VCU, right? And, you know, this is a special place. Like, it's easy to tell. In six full seasons as head coach at UMBC and Utah State, Odom has made four postseason appearances, including the historic upset where the UMBC Retrievers beat UVA in the first round of the NCAA tournament. Incredible performance. Shock and awe in college basketball. UNBC makes history. VCU Athletic Director Ed McLaughlin believes that Odom's resume speaks volumes. He is a winner. He won at the Division II level for the Sweet 16. He won at UNBC and uh, engineered possibly the greatest upset at that time. For now, the Rams only have five players on scholarship, so we'll have to wait and see what comes next for VCU basketball. Reporting from the Siegel Center, I'm Sam Wolf. Plans are in the works to build the largest indoor pickleball facility in Virginia, right here in Henrico County. Insight Somas Harris brings us to the site to tell us more about the sport pickleball and its growing popularity. Right now, it's a vacant storefront here at the Regency Mall. But this is where developers want to build the Performance Pickleball RBA facility. Here, players with any type of experience are invited to practice their skills. Pickleball is an indoor or outdoor game played on a level court with paddles and a perforated plastic ball that's volleyed over a low net by two players or a pair of players. According to Richmond BizSense, the 41,000 square foot space will include 18 courts with six being outdoor. It will be located where the Macy store used to be. The new facility will also include a pro shop, bar, and restaurant. The venue plans to hold clinics, leagues, and drop-in play sessions, as well as tournaments. It will offer memberships, but will also be open to non-members. After completion, the facility will be the largest of its kind in Virginia. Construction is slated to start in May or June, with the target completion date in December for the first phase of the project. At the Regency Mall in Richmond, Reporting for VCU Insight, I'm Zomas Harris. Kroger grocery stores in Virginia will now accept EBT payments for all online orders. 
Kroger has accepted SNAP benefits for years now, but only in the store. Allowing customers to use them online provides a more accessible option. To use EBT payments online, you have to go to the Kroger website or the app and add a new card to your account. From there, you can add items to your cart that are SNAP eligible, and once at the checkout screen, you'll select EBT as the payment option. To find SNAP eligible items, you can look on the Food and Nutrition Service U.S. Department of Agricultural website. This new process has also started in West Virginia, Kentucky, Tennessee, and Ohio. Lee Circle will have a different look come spring, as the city plans to remove the fence around it. Reporter Natalie Barr is down at Lee Circle to give us the latest on this development. As you can see here behind me, workers are already here in Lee Circle doing beginning landscaping work on this area. And one worker told me that the final result will be flowers enclosing this space to bring a new look. And according to second district councilwoman Catherine Jordan, the fence will remain up until their work is done to protect the workers safety. City workers will install irrigation in a temporary landscaping plan costing $100,000 before the fence is taken down. The future use of this space is unclear. According to the Richmond Planning Commission details, the city simply refers to this space as the traffic circle and in the past implemented a design plan that would discourage pedestrian access. During the summer 2020 racial justice protest, Following the death of George Floyd, this area was a symbolic focal point. Street art appeared on the base of the removed statue and the images symbolized the movement. The area was renamed the Marcus David Peter Circle to honor a VCU alum and teacher killed by police back in 2018. Many members of the Richmond community would like to see the city work with them to come up with a mutually acceptable use for this space. Now, a spokesperson for the city has not put out a definitive timeline for when the renovation will be completed or a date of which the fence will be taken down. Reporting from the Lee Circle in Richmond, I'm Natalie Barr, VCU Insight. The city of Richmond moves to buy a remote island on the James River. Yaba Hunu is on the island with how the purchase is going. Mayo Island is the only island in Richmond with buildings and parking decks. The city wants to buy it for $15 million and give it a whole new look. The city wants to make Mayo Island part of the James River Park System, a 600-acre linear park that spans the city from west to east. The 15 Anchors Island sits in the middle of James River. It dates back to the 18th century with a record of private ownership. The city will get money from Capital Region Land Conservatory, state funding, and city debt to turn this private area into a public park. But Mayo Island is still on the market for $19 million, so nothing's been finalized. Reporting from VCU Insight in Richmond, I'm Yabo Hunu. This week, Richmond City Planning Commission unanimously passed a proposal to get rid of parking space requirements in neighborhoods across the city. For now, the city's zoning's zoning rules place minimum parking requirements for most developments. Some officials say terminating these minimum will encourage the development of surface parking lots outside developments and potentially lower building costs. However, opponents argue this termination of parking minimums is ill-suited for the city because of limited public transportation infrastructure, and some say they enjoy having an abundance of parking options. Ownership of the two African-American cemeteries in Richmond is still up in the air, but nonprofits and organizers are doing everything they can to maintain these historic sites. Yaba Hunu shows us how one group is working to make sure the property stays tidy, even though they're not sure what the future may hold. Mark Schmieder serves as the president of Friends of East End, a nonprofit built to maintain the 16 anchors of East End Cemetery, a prominent African American cemetery dating back to 1891. He spends his weekends maintaining headstones to make sure they're visible. We're only doing some uh, one off projects here at the cemetery, picking up sticks, cutting things that are falling down, and whatnot. Uh, we are going to have to start mowing soon because it's uh, looking a little ragged here. Both East End and Evergreen cemeteries are being neglected despite volunteers' efforts. While walking through the area, some grass patches grew to the knees, and a lot of headstones have either fallen down, are broken, or submerged underground. The Richmond Foundation owned both cemeteries until they're collapsed. Now East End and Evergreen are in ownership limbo, letting years of neglect spread across the fields. These historic sites have over 20,000 African Americans buried, including some prominent figures like Maggie Walker, 
Friends of East End board members tell me that enrichment forced them out in 2020, suspending their volunteer days. But that didn't stop the nonprofit from spreading the word and getting more help. Students and faculty from multiple schools are creating collaborative projects to continue cleanup efforts. Professor Megan Goff teaches a course at VCU that allows students to work with local cemeteries to research and draft solutions. Exposing as many people and students and you know family members to the realities and in the importance of these spaces is something I'm very much committed to. Until legalities are sorted, Friends of East End will continue their work. From VCU Insight in Richmond, I'm Yabo Hunu. Richmond Fashion Week turns 15 this year. Designers and fashion lovers from around the state are here to join in on the fun and community fellowship. Insight reporter Taraje Jenkins is in the studio with more on a group of high schoolers who are showing, showcasing their pieces. The first show of RVA Fashion Week was full of high fashion at Thomas Jefferson High School, but it was not the only focus of the night for the young creatives who designed the show. Since November, the Thomas Jefferson's Girls for Change Action Team curated and designed original pieces for their fashion show, Show Up TJ, and Secure the Bag. It kicked off RVA Fashion Week. The group doesn't just design pieces, they also meet after school to talk about societal issues and how they can help tackle it. The show was designed to showcase their fashion, help bridge the gap between public schools and community engagement, and bring awareness and solutions to the challenges of the fashion industry. Fashion show organizers praised the work of the high school group's founder, Angela Patton. And this show is so important to us in the community because we get to mentor the youth. So everything Angela Patton and her whole team are doing for these girls here is amazing and we can't wait to continue to support them down the road. To learn more about their initiatives, visit girlsforachange.org. A show for local emerging designers will be held at the Branch Museum for Architecture and Design this evening, and the annual Fashion Week Gala will be tomorrow at the Hippodrome Theater, and the finale, known as the Richmond Met, will be on Sunday night. For more information on the list of this week's event, visit rvafw.com. I'm Taraje Jenkins, reporting for VCU Insight. What do you think of when you hear yoga? Probably words like calm, soft music, hot yoga. But did you associate goats with yoga? Insight reporter Natalie Barr attended yoga at Pactamir Farm in Glen Allen to give us the details. You will not find quiet, calm music or hardwood floors at this yoga studio. It's inside a renovated barn, the floor is hay, and filled with goats running around, even jumping on attendees' backs. First-time goat yoga attendees Lee and Charles found calmness while in Warrior One and surrounded by goats of all sizes. Took you away from maybe what kind of stress that you might have. You know, yes. a lot of people do yoga to kind of decompress, and, and that was awesome. Owners here at Goat Yoga RVA did not expect to find such joy and love through these goats, and they wanted to bring that same joy and love to the community. When yoga instructor LeVar Carter heard about the opportunity to teach at Goat Yoga RVA, he thought it would be perfect as it combines two things he loves, goats and yoga. The goats are their own little creatures, their own little beings, and they have their own agenda, which is to have fun and just cause chaos, you know, so it's, a, it's a, quite a contrast to the sort of normal sort of serenity and focus of a, of a usual yoga class. The emotional healing through animal interaction is still present during class. Carter encourages people to step out of their comfort zone. I think it's great when people get out of the city and, you know, hang out with other people and hang out with animals and have new experiences. And so uh, I think that is all part of, of the magic of, of the yoga experience. <laughs> For those who might be scared they will not be good at yoga, Perlis says to erase your mind of what you think yoga is and take this class. Reporting from Pactamir Farm for VCU Insight, I'm Natalie Barr. Goat yoga classes are suited for both those new or experienced to yoga, and someone does come along and clean up after the goats during the class. Let's take a look at the weather Friday. The weather, Friday is warm with a high of 88 degrees, but for Saturday, the morning is sunny. But grab your umbrella and rain boots for the afternoon. Expect showers and storms with a high of 80 degrees. You can check out the latest edition of VCU Insight on Thursday afternoons on our YouTube channel. For VCU Insight, I'm Rachel Oliver.